there was a lot of discussion early days how much development you could sustainably do from our force, and it was quite a bit. The Tesla and biomass project, it's been a long dream, and there's been a hunger for this type of work. One of the things that we learned on a fact-finding tour to Finland that, that we did around sawmilling, they make uh, all of their money off of the, the byproduct. They don't make their money off the lumber. And because of the, the strong uh, taper in the trees uh, that we have here, 60% of the log is byproduct or waste. If we could create a market for that 60% of that, of that tree coming out of the bush, then it would make it viable for us to start a sawmill. We started a strategic energy plan for the community and we're looking at multiple sources of renewables, uh, biomass being one of them. But we pulled in the, the Northern Research Centre, we pulled in the Yukon College, we've pulled in uh, Yukon Government Energy Solutions, we have our Community Development Corporation in as a partner, and the municipality is also a partner. Because we're just getting into this business, we wanted a system that was very forgiving. We went with an Austrian-made uh, boiler, chip boiler, that can take green chips, dry chips, dirty chips, different size chips. It's probably the most forgiving chip boiler out there. It's one of the, the only ones that's been able to get CSA approval in Canada, uh, which was important to us. In Whitehorse, we introduced a Hargasner, an Austrian wood chip boiler at Raven Recycling and then the communities toured through and Teslin saw the potential with this wood chip boiler and um, they requested 10 of them. So now this project has begun and they're, um, they're well on their way to installing 10 of these wood chip boilers in their community. So this is the, the combustion chamber of, of the wood chips and they'll be fed in and if this is running you'd see flames and heat coming out of here. But one thing that's um, pretty impressive about these units is when these units when these units are hot and running full out you you don't feel hardly any heat coming off this thing all that heat is captured in that and it's really well insulated and it just heats the water what it's supposed to do not heating the space this is a, a small district heating building and there's four um, four units that will actually store the chips on this side and each one of these auger screws will feed um, the Hargasner wood, fire, wood chip boiler on the other side of this wall. There, there's pipes that go into the buildings from here with hot water to heat those buildings. In phase one, we're looking at TTC buildings uh, only, and it's 10 buildings being heated by three energy centers with 10 Hargasner biomass wood chip burners. For phase two, we're looking at the inclusion of Yukon government buildings and the municipality. The next logical steps would be looking at residential clusters, industrial clusters, and, and so forth as future opportunities for biomass. What I've seen here so far is, is good work. I, I like what has been done. So the installations look good and uh, I think this is a very good start, very important start. So we have 60 cord of waste material that we turned into chips. Turns into 30 cord of chips and that's one bay is full and we're just starting to fill our second bay. We've built an oversized concrete pad so that the bucket never touches anything other than wood chips. That's really eliminated a lot of quality issues that we've seen elsewhere. The yard will be storing wood inventory for one to two years to bring the moisture down. Once the moisture's down to about 20 or 30 percent, it'll be chipped and then from that point on it'll be delivered to the energy centers as wood fuel. For phase one we're looking at waste wood inclusion, incidentally harvested wood for development. In addition to that wildfire risk mitigation is going to be a huge yield for the biomass feedstock as well. We are currently doing a commercial timber harvest plan with Yukon government to open up permitted timber harvesting as well. With phase two when we're looking at additional heating centers that will be the, the launch of the timber mill. We will benefit from the waste wood that it produces. I saw huge, from my point of view, huge bioenergy step here. New uh, installations of, of bioenergy 
bio, biomass heating and, and uh, huge efforts to get forward with the biomass energy. It's, it's uh, something which will profit the whole community definitely in the future. They, they get the money circulating here in this local economy. The impacts will be huge. We will be offsetting approximately 110,000 liters of diesel fuel. That is a direct economic impact to the community of approximately $85,000. The environmental benefit of the biomass project is a reduction in greenhouse gases. There's a benefit from the trucks not being on the road, but there's also a benefit from the diesel not being burned for heat. Uh, that benefit equals approximately 7,470 tonnes of GHG per year. And when I talk about two and a half million litres over the next uh, 30 years that will not need to be brought into the community and burned, that's an Olympic-sized swimming pool. I get to do what I love to do. I love making lumber, I love logging, and I love working. There's 26 contracts uh, that have been awarded for the biomass project over the last uh, four months of, of construction, as well as the service people and operators that perform any kind of maintenance that's required. I think the most impressive was that the, this is quite a small community and they are so active and making so much effort, or doing so much effort to have this biomass project viable and, and working and I'm really, I'm really impressed about the speed that they are going forward. There's been a tremendous amount of planning that has brought us to the stage that we're at. We see biomass as being one of the main pillars of, of our renewable energy mix, that portfolio of all those renewable energy options. I think the real cause for success for us is that this has all been community pushed. We've been reminded again and again in every consultation that they want a forest economy, they want a sawmill, community wants this.